Good day, everybody. Woo! I'm Nathan. A lot of people know me as Patches. I'm with Food Not Bombs. And uh, I'm just here in general for solidarity with May Day, of course. Remember a couple years ago, we actually did one here and I had all these puppets. And we had uh, we had uh, August Spees and we wrote a, read a sentencing statement from... Uh, 1886 from when he was hung for the Haymarket Affair. Um, but uh, I'm here to talk about another thing that happened around that same time, which is a couple people from Florida went up to Chicago and they became known as uh, some of the NATO three. One of them's right there, it's Brent Betterly. Uh, their lives basically ended in May of 2012. They uh, they were picked up for this phony terror plot that they were entra entrapped in. Um, they met the people during May Day, and then a couple weeks later, they were picked up. Um, and just last week, they were sentenced. Uh, Brent was sentenced to five years, and the other guys got six and eight years. That basically makes them uh, some of the longest-serving uh, anti-capitalist uh, Floridian political prisoners in recent history. So um, it's been a pretty serious, uh, serious time for them. Um, and so I wanted to read another sentencing statement this year. So, uh, if y'all don't mind, I'm, I'm going to read some excerpts from Brent Betterly's sentencing statement that he read in court last Friday when he was sentenced to five years in prison. <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of categorizations, but one label that has continuously been advanced by the state as if it was a condemnation somehow synonymous with a violent terrorist, and I will not sh shy away from, is that of the so-called self-proclaimed anarchist. Without professing to be an expert in all the complexities of political philosophy, I will say as one who identifies <clears throat> as an anarchist, <clears throat> there are specific principles I strive to live by and those I choose to reject. I believe that within everybody lies the ability and the right, both individually and collectively, to responsibly govern themselves. I believe in empowering people to overcome the disadvantage the disadvantages and inequities imposed on them by others in power. I oppose, oppose the exploitation and degradation of human potential in every form, be it racism, sexism, homophobia, or classism, and these violently institutionalized injustices are deeply etched into the conscience of our society. Admittedly, I'm not 100% sure how you completely dismantle and abolish such archaic institutions, but I am at least intelligent enough to realize that the reciprocation of these sort of violent ideologies is a historical failure and counterproductive. The reason I came to Chicago was to join my voice in solidarity with the millions of people around the world who have learned the true meaning of terror at the hands of NATO and their seemingly endless war agenda. These people's only crimes were being born into regions coveted by transnational corporations and their political allies for their politically and economically strategic locations. I came to lend my voice to those who, as a result of the seemingly insatiable appetite of these corporate and political giants, no longer have one. It's my sincere hope here today that this case and others like it will continue to spark public discourse about the ominous direction we've been heading in with this war on terror. The people have every right to question government practices, especially when they discover that the fears and biases that permeate our society are being manipulated and distorted to quell the voices of dissent and to defer these injustices <clears throat> and to defer these injustices are being perpetrated and now it is the time to begin to identify and rectify these mistakes. Of course, political dissidents are not the only targets in this vast war on terror, and all too often it can be as blatantly rep repressive as the color of your skin, what religion you identify with, or what your moral beliefs are. The assertion that I came here motivated by hatred and violent in intentions could not be farther from the truth. I've met some truly amazing and supportive people here in Chicago, and I love and value all the friendships I've cultivated here both before and during my incarceration. That is what really motivates me, <clears throat> what drives me to fight for social justice and resist war and exploitation. My love for people, my faith in humanity, and my empathy and compassion for the victims of violence and oppression. I shudder to imagine the world in which my son will grow up and dread the day 
<clears throat> when his na naivety and innocence are shattered. But rather than shield him from the reality of this world, I take it as my parental duty to expose the truth for his generation so that he may continue our struggle towards a more compassionate and sustainable future. I love my son so much with my entire heart, and I want better things for him than what I had. I wouldn't dream one day telling him to sacrifice his moral convictions in favor of a path of least resistance, or that it is perfectly acceptable to blindly obey authority, that to question its motivations and policies of those in power is somehow criminal. I hope that my beautiful, intelligent little boy knows that daddy is no monster. The master monsters don't exist, not even on this side of the cage, because the injustices and cruelties in this world are perpetrated by people that exist on both sides. So thank you and support the NATO 3. Oh, oh, oh.